Hello everyone, a very good morning to all of you. I hope I am clearly visible and audible to you people. Let me confirm if I am clearly visible and audible, I will start the lecture ahead. You have to give me a minute for confirmation. So I welcome you all for today's session. So yeah, I hope I am clearly visible and audible. So a very good morning to all of you. I am Dr. Priyanka Sachdev here. And today I am here to teach you a topic from systemic pathology, from nervous system. I am going to teach you a very important topic that is meningitis. So in pathology, this topic is really very important. Many MCQs are coming from this topic in your competitive exams, NEET, PG, FMG and INICT. And this topic is also really important for second prof MBBS university exams also. So let me start with the systemic pathology, nervous system, meningitis without wasting time. So in nervous system, before starting meningitis, I would like to give you an overview of general structure of the meninges and then I will start the topic meningitis, the various types of meningitis, how to diagnose them, what is the difference between them and what are the questions which are important from them. So let me start. So we know what is the nervous system. In nervous system, I am talking about the central nervous system. In central nervous system, we have two structures that is the brain and the spinal cord brain and spinal cord the brain is present inside the skull and spinal cord is present inside the vertebra so brain and spinal cord constitute the central nervous system this is brain and this is spinal cord so this is the central nervous system now brain and spinal cord uh, let me talk about this central nervous system there are two things inside it number one the parenchyma you know parenchyma the structure the structure the brain is made up of the cells these cells are known as parenchymal cells the brain parenchyma that is the central nervous system parenchyma so how many type of cells are present in the brain and second structure is the meninges the coverings the meninges so there are three meninges surrounding the central nervous system the innermost one is the pyometer which i have drawn with this red color this one you can say it is pyometer the middle one you can say the middle one here i have drawn with purple color it is arachnoid it is known as arachnoid so the middle one is known as arachnoid the middle one is the arachnoid and the outer one, you can see I am drawing with green color. It is known as dura meter. So dura meter is the outermost one. So this is dura, dura meter, right? Dura meter. And above the dura meter, we have skull. So let me draw the skull. So this is the skull bone, skull bone, skull and the vertebra. So this is the dura meter. Uski upar skull and vertebra hai. So what are the various spaces available there? Between the meninges, these are the coverings. There are three meninges. Three coverings, innermost is the pyometer, middle is the arachnoid, outermost is the dura meter. And the cells of the brain and the spinal cord are known as parenchymal cells. These are the parenchymal cells. Now, how many types of spaces are available? If you see the dura meter, in the dura meter, this is the green color layer, the dura meter. So, just below and above the dura meter, both below and above, we have two spaces. Just below the dura meter and above. Above the dura meter, it is epidural and below the dura meter, it is subdural. So, epi and subdural are the two spaces associated with dura meter. Epidural is the space between skull and dura. Subdural is the space between dura and arachnoid. Right. Let me come on the second layer. Arachnoid. Arachnoid ke upar we have subdural and uske niche this space just below the arachnoid. This space is known as subarachnoid. Subarachnoid. And regarding pia. Pia meter ke upar we have subarachnoid and uske niche there is no space. Because pyometer is adhered with the brain and spinal cord. It is adhered. This space is not there. So this pyometer is adhered to the brain and spinal cord. We don't have the space. So total we are having three spaces. Epidural, subdural and subarachnoid. Out of the three spaces, subarachnoid is filled with CSF. So these are the general things. I know you already know it. So that is just for revision. So, okay. So you got it. What is, uh, what is the central nervous system? Brain and spinal cord. One important thing is there. Brain do not have lymphatic. The only organ in human body which do not have lymphatic is the brain. Now in the brain, as I have told you, there are two parts. Central nervous system, two parts. The central nervous system, parenchyma. These are the cells which constitute the parenchyma, which constitute the structure of the brain and the spinal cord. And meninges are the coverings. There are three coverings, which I have told you, meninges. So meninges are the coverings. So let me talk about the parenchyma. That is cells. How many types of cells are present? The most important cells are neurons, which transmit the signals. Which, which secrete the neurotransmitter and transmit the signal from, from the central nervous system to the peripheral nervous system and to various organs. So these are the main cells, neurons, neurons. Apart from the neurons, we have three supporting cells. The supporting cells are known as neuroglia. Neuroglia are the supporting cells. 
they do not do the transmission signal transmission is not done by them but they do some other functions so i will tell you about them there are three supporting cells astrocytes oligodendrocytes and ependymal cells these all cells are neuroglia they are the supporting cells and the third are microglial cells also known as gitter gitter cells these are the macrophages in the brain so the macrophages in the brain are known as microglial cells right like the macrophages in the liver are known as kupffer cells so macrophages have various names in various organs so in brain the macrophages are known as microglial or gitter cell have you got it have you got it so these are the type of the cells in parenchyma of the cns central nervous system neurons are the main cells which do the signal transmission neuroglia are the supporting cells there are three types of neuroglia ostrea astrocyte oligodendrocyte and ependymal ependymal cells and uh, microglial cells are the macrophages of the brain also known as gitter cells now tumor can occur in any cell which arises get tumor can occur can arise from any of these cells tumor can arise from astrocytes it is known as astrocytoma so tumor can arise from oligodendrocytes it is known as oligodendroglioma it can arise from ependymal cells it is known as ependymoma so these tumors are known as glial tumors yes gliomas gliomas so all these tumors are gliomas gliomas so gliomas are of three so gliomas are basically the tumors of neuroglial cells gliomas these are the most common tumors in the brain right so there are various types of tumors uh, available uh, which can occur in the brain so the few important one will be from these okay today i am not teaching you the tumors of the brain okay so let me start with the meninges as i have told you meninges are the coverings they are the coverings of the brain brain and spinal cord there are three meninges dura meter arachnoid and pia meter you can see dura meter arachnoid and pia meter there are three meninges so you can see this is the brain and the spinal cord please appreciate this is brain and spinal cord this is brain and spinal cord if i am zooming this structure if i am zooming this structure you can see the three meninges separately so this is the parenchyma and this is the skull this is the skull uske beech mein three meninges are there so innermost is the pia which is adhered to the parenchyma then the second layer is the arachnoid and the third layer is the dura meter and we have three spaces one above dura one below dura and one below arachnoid so we have three spaces epidural subdural and subarachnoid so the same diagram the zoom version of the meninges here it is shown here so you can see the three meninges pia meter arachnoid and dura meter the three meninges pia meter arachnoid and dura meter is in front of you give me a thumbs up if you got it so these are the three meninges so this is parenchyma and meninges so parenchyma mein cells are there so let me give you a brief brief introduction about the cells and immediately come on the meninges so neurons are the main cells as we know neurons are the permanent cells once they are injured they will not uh, again do the cell division they will not do cell division after postnatal life that is they are permanent or terminally differentiated cell so once stroke occur in the brain it is a irreversible injury it is a irreversible injury so this is a diagram of a neuron neuron have a cell body you can see this is the cell body these are the dendrites multiple dendrites are present and one axon is present you know the structure you have studied it in detail right uh, cell body axon and numerous dendrites these are the structures uh can you see the multiple granules inside the cell body the blue color what are these is pe mcq aata hai these are nissel these are known as nissel these are known as nissel substance the cytoplasm contains multiple basophilic structure which are nissel substance these are the aggregates of rna and endoplasmic reticulum this is a very important mcq which comes from the anatomy portion have you got it from the anatomy portion right so that is about the neurons neuroglia the three cells as i have told you these are supporting cells they do not do the transmission these are supporting cells so what is their support what is their main main function so and what is the meaning of astrocyte oligodendrocyte and ependymal what what is their nomenclature so astrocytes are known as the neuroglia cells are the supportive cells so the, there are three types the first are astrocytes astro matlab star you know star the meaning of star in greek language is known as astro astro so astrology so astrocytes are known as astrocytes because they are star shaped that's why that is the meaning of their name so there are two type of astrocytes see this one this one the first one this one it is known as protoplasmic astrocyte and the second one can you see this one it is known as fibrous astrocyte so both of them are star shaped but two type of astrocytes are there so protoplasmic astrocyte is present in gray matter and fibrous is present in white matter and both of them are star shaped have you got it what is the function 
if I'm having injury at any part of the body, so what will happen? The, the healing will take place after injury. Healing means fibrosis. In the brain, we don't have fibrosis. We have gliosis. In normal body parts, fibrosis is done by myofibroblast cells. So brain do not have myofibroblast cells. So the astrocytes are the equivalent of fibro, fibroblast cells, myofibroblast cells. So they do the fibrosis in the brain. But in the brain, it is not known as fibrosis. It is known as gliosis. So it is equivalent to scar anywhere else in the body. If I'm having injury anywhere else, scar is formed. If I'm having injury in the brain, instead of scar, gliosis will be there. So scar banane ke liye fibroblast cells hai. Brain mein fibroblast nahi hai. Brain have astrocytes. So in case of damage to the brain, the astrocytes will become activated and they will do the gliosis. Give me a thumbs up. So that is the function of the astrocytes. Give me a thumbs up. The second is oligodendrocyte. Oligo matlab small. Oligo means small. Uh, few. Oligo matlab few. Why they are known as oligodendrocytes? Because can you see they have fewer. They have fewer processes. They are short and fewer processes. See the cell processes. These cell processes of them are few and short. That's why they are known as oligodendrocytes. The dendrites are short. Oligodendrocytes, right? What they have a clear halo around their nucleus. If you see, this is the blue color nucleus of each of them. Please appreciate. And around the blue color nucleus, if you see, there is a clear halo. So they have a clear halo. This is the egg appearance. Fried egg appearance. It is known as this baby MCQ. It is known as fried egg appearance. Have you got it? Fried egg appearance. So that is known as oligodendrocytes. What is their function? Oligodendrocytes are used for the formation of myelin sheath. You know there is neuron. Neuron is the main cell. So what is the diagram of neuron? So neuron as I have told you, neuron have a cell body, numerous dendrites and one exon. This is the exon. Above the exon, there is a myelin sheath. This is the myelin sheath a present above the which covers the exon. So this myelin sheath synthesis is done by oligodendrocytes. So oligodendrocytes is is for the synthesis of myelin sheath. So that is their supporting action. So they are for the formation and maintenance of myelin sheath of the neuron. Right. So in central nervous system, the myelin sheath is formed by oligodendrocytes. But in peripheral nervous system, the myelin sheath is formed by Schwann cells. So oligodendrocytes and Schwann cells are counterpart of each other. Have you got it? So learn like this. Coops. Coops. Coops is the mnemonic. So what is the mnemonic? Central nervous system. Peripheral nervous system. We have two nervous systems. Central, the brain and the spinal cord. And peripheral nervous system, we have 12 pairs of cranial nerves and 33 pairs of spinal nerves. So that is a peripheral nervous system. So in central nervous system, uh, the myelin sheath is formed by oligodendrocytes. Central may. And in peripheral nervous system, the myelin sheath is formed by Schwann cells. So you can say oligodendrocytes and Schwann cells are counterpart of each other. It's PB MCQ. Have you got it? Have you got it? If... If the disease of oligodendrocytes will occur, so myelin sheath will not be formed in the body. Such disease is known as demyelinating disease. Such disease is known as demyelinating disease. And the third and the last supporting cells are ependymal cells. Give me a thumbs up. Ependymal cells. What are ependymal cells? Why they are known as ependymal? Because they look like epithelium. Uh, astrocytes are known as astrocytes because they look like star. The first two cells. Can you see? They are looking like star. Oligodendrocytes are known as oligodendrocytes because they have oligomethyl smaller fewer processes, fewer dendrites and ependymal cells are known as ependymal because they look like epithelium. Can you see? They are looking like epithelium cell. They are not epithelium but they are looking like epithelium. That's why known have known as known as ependymal cells and they have cilia on them. Can you appreciate the cilia? Please zoom out and see the cilia. The cilia here is known as blepharoplast. The cilia is known as blepharoplast, right? So they, what is, they have ciliated surface. What is their function? They are they, they form the CSF. They form the CSF. They form the form and composite. The formation and composition of the CSF is done by oligodendrocytes. So the main cells are done. And last one the, are the microglia. So microglia also known as Gitter cell. Also known as Hortega cell. One and the same thing. It's PB MCQ. Aata hai. PYQ is already there on Hortega and Gitter cells. So microglia, Hortega, Gitter. All of them is one and the same thing. That is monocyte macrophage system in CNS. In the brain and spinal cord. So I'm done with the various. So this is the diagram of microglia gitter cell. You can see. So brain parenchyma the various cells are available. So you know everything about the cells. So neurons are the main cell. They have a cell body, numerous dendrites, exon and a myelin sheath. Neuroglia are the supporting cells. So there are three types of supporting cells. Astro are known as astro because they are star shaped. Oligo are known as oligo because they have few dendrites. 
few oligodendrites, few processes. And ependymal is known as ependymal because they look like epithelia. What is the function of each of them? Astro is required for scar formation or gliosis in the brain. Oligo is required for myelin formation in the brain. And ependymal is required for formation of uh, CNS in the brain, CSF in the brain. Cerebrospinal fluid, CSF in the brain. Give me a thumbs up. That is the function and the meaning of their name. And microglial cells are known as, the other name is Hortega, also known as, dusra kya tha, Gitter. Hortega or Gitter cell. And what are they? These are the monocytes or macrophages. One and the same thing. Monocyte or macrophages of the brain, you can say. So, in sub pe MCQ aate hai, these are the basics you should know. Have you got it? I am done with everything about the parenchyma. Now, parenchyma understanding is more beneficial if you understand the tumors of the brain. So, I will teach you the tumors also, but in the next lecture, not now. So, today I am going to teach you the managers. So, let me start with the managers. As I have already told you, three types of managers are there. So, you can see the best diagram here. You can see the three types of managers. So, you can see this is my scalp. So, this is my scalp. This is my scalp. My scalp have hair. So, this is the skin of my scalp. Can you see? This is the skin of my scalp having hair. And just below the scalp skin, the fascia, I am having the bone, the cranial bone. So, this is the cranial bone. Can you see? This is the cranium. Cranium. This is the cranial bone. Right? And this is the cerebral cortex. This is the brain. This is the brain. This is the brain. Now, in between the skull and the brain, cerebral cortex, there are three managers. You can appreciate three of them. So, innermost is the pyometer, which is adhered to the brain. It is adhered. to chipki hui hai brain se. The second, the second one is arachnoid. This one is the arachnoid. You can see. And the outermost is the durameter. You can see this is the durameter. And you can appreciate the spaces. I will show you spaces also here. So, one space above dura, it is known as epidural. Between the skull and the dura. And one space below dura, it is known as subdural. So, dura ke ek upar hai, ek niche hai. Epidural, subdural. Arachnoid pe aajau. Arachnoid ke ek upar hai. It is known as uh, subdural only. Or ye, this one. Subdural only. This is subdural only. Or arachnoid ke ek niche hai. It is known as subarachnoid space. It is known as subarachnoid. Subarachnoid space is filled with CSF. So, there are three spaces you should appreciate. Have you got it? So, the same thing is written. So, dura is adhered to the skull. And epidural, subdural, two spaces are there. Dura say associated, right? And pyometer or arachnoid, the two together are known as lepto managers. So, total three managers are there now. Usme se two together are known as lepto. So, total three managers are dura meter, arachnoid, and pyometer. Arachnoid and pyometer together known as lepto, lepto managers. So, most commonly meningitis occurs in these two, right? Meningitis is the inflammation, these two. And subarachnoid space contains the CSF as I have told you, okay? Let me start the topic, meningitis. Are you people there? Should I start the meningitis? So, I am starting the topic meningitis. As the name indicates, itis. Itis matlab hota hai inflammation of any part of the body. Appendicitis, bronchitis, pneumonitis. So, it is the inflammation of that particular part of the body, right? So, meningitis, it is the inflammation of the meninges. So, there are three managers. Kiska inflammation hai? Which one? Which one of them is having managers? If, if durameter is showing the inflammation, it is known as pachy meningitis. And if pia plus arachnoid together, they always occur together. So, if inflammation occurs in pia plus arachnoid, it is known as lepto meninges. So, meningitis is of two types. Pachy meningitis, pachy meningitis and lepto meningitis. In pachy meningitis, there is inflammation of the durameter. It is less common. And in lepto meningitis, there is inflammation of the pia as well as arachnoid together. And it is more common. Give me a thumbs up. Again, give me a thumbs up if you got this. So, the same thing written here. Dura means pachy meningitis. And lepto meninges, that is pia plus arachnoid is known as lepto meningitis. So, two type of meningitis are there. So, you can see. Let me zoom out this portion here. And you can see these are the three meninges. And these are inflamed here. They got inflamed. So, it is known as meningitis. So, inflammation of the meninges is known as meningitis. Give me a thumbs up. So, the managers are present all over the skull. So, it is which portion of the managers got inflamed. Now, it can be bacterial, it can be viral, it can be fungal. Who is causing the inflammation? The inflammation can be caused by the bacteria, it is known as bacterial meningitis. It can be caused by virus, it is known as viral meningitis. It can be caused by fungus. So, it is known as fungal meningitis, right? So, these are the various types of meningitis are there. If it is bacterial, pus will be formed. Bacterial is pyogenic, now. So, bacteria will form the pus. These two will not form the pus. So, can you see? This is a bacterial meningitis. Can you appreciate the pus here in the meninges? This is all white colored pus. So, pus formation in the meninges, right? So, it is the bacterial meningitis that is visible. There is a pus in the meninges. So, it can be a IBQ also. This type of IBQ can also come in your exam. So, okay. My next question. Whatever organism is there, it can be bacteria, it can be virus, it can be fungus. How the organism is reaching up to meninges? How? What is the root? 
what is the route by which these organisms are reaching for causing the inflammation these organisms should reach my meninges now so how they reach the meninges what are the possible routes does anyone know there are three routes the most common route is the blood if bacteria virus fungus is present in the blood blood is going everywhere so the person having sepsis the blood, blood is going everywhere so blood is going in the meninges also so it will cause meningitis there number one number two from the adjacent focus adjacent focus means just near the brain we have ears we have inner ear just near the brain we have nose connected behind we have eyeball connected behind so if there is an infection in these organs nose ear eyes with bacteria fungus or virus so the bacteria fungus virus can directly go in the brain and the spinal cord so without going in the blood that is the adjacent focus give me a thumbs up and the third most common route of infection is known as heterogenic what do you mean by heterogenic heterogenic is physician induced doctor induced have you got it so lumbar puncture is the procedure you know there is a procedure known as lumbar puncture in which we take the csf out so while doing the lumbar puncture we are introducing a needle inside inside the subarachnoid space so this is a needle this is a syringe we are introducing it if we do not follow the septic precautions so we will introduce along with the needle we will introduce the bacteria virus and fungus also so lumbar puncture is a very important procedure and while performing lumbar puncture the doctor the physician should take the septic precautions very judiciously so clean the skin thoroughly take all septic wear gloves don't touch the syringe don't touch the needle directly open and insert take a sterile needle take a sterile syringe and then insert so if you have breached the septic process anywhere you will introduce the bacteria virus and fungus inside the person and the person will have meningitis so such type of meningitis which is introduced by the doctor doctor has given meningitis to the patient so it is known as heterogenic it is during lumbar puncture give me a thumbs up if you got it everyone give me a thumbs up if you got this point so this is the lumbar puncture this is the lumbar puncture ab lumbar puncture ki baat nikli hai to let me teach you lumbar puncture completely lumbar puncture pe bahut sare mcqs aate hain so lumbar puncture can you see where is why lumbar puncture is done lumbar puncture is done to obtain csf out of the body csf is a fluid we can take it out now csf is present in subarachnoid space as i have told you so subarachnoid space so let me draw this is the brain and this is the spinal cord so there are three meninges around the brain also and the three meninges around the spinal cord also so this is the first meninges this is the second arachnoid and this is the third one that is dura mater the three meninges are present around both brain and spinal cord so where is csf present csf is present in the subarachnoid space this this space subarachnoid space so csf is present around the brain also around the spinal cord also both ways csf is present so if you want to take csf out of the body take it take it out from the spinal cord so csf is always taken out of the spinal cord never from the brain same csf is flowing everywhere so take csf out of the spinal cord the level is l3 l4 between l3 l4 can you see this is l3 vertebra this is l4 vertebra insert a needle and go to the subarachnoid space and take the csf out suck it take it take the plunger behind and take the csf out in the syringe and collect it in a test tube so it is l3 l4 l3 l4 pe bahut questions aate hain give me a thumbs up if you got it so that is the lumbar puncture why we are doing lumbar puncture why we want to take csf out of the body in a test tube this is csf why so there are two reasons diagnostic and therapeutic what are the reasons first for the diagnosis of meningitis if you are suspecting meningitis in any patient meningitis is not diagnosed on blood it is diagnosed on csf only so take the csf out number 1 in case of suspicious subarachnoid hemorrhage if you are suspecting subarachnoid hemorrhage take the csf out csf will show the blood csf will contain blood number 3 in case of gullian berry syndrome gullian berry syndrome ka diagnosis ke liye we have to take csf out right and for therapeutic relief of pseudo tumor cerebri what is pseudo tumor cerebri in pseudo tumor cerebri csf is too much so it is causing too much pressure over the brain so patient will have severe headache nausea vomiting because of abundant increased pressure in the brain so to relieve the pressure temporarily we will take the csf out so that the symptoms are subsided so this one is therapeutic these three are diagnostic so diagnostic reasons therapeutic reasons so three diagnostic reasons are there and one therapeutic reason is there give me a thumbs up if you got it give me a thumbs up so these are the indications what are the contraindications in which you don't have to do you don't have to do uh the csf examination that is lumbar puncture if the person is having any skin infection at this point at this point the person is having skin infection you cannot introduce a needle there so skin infection will go inside and person will have meningitis 
will have so if the person is having any skin infection near the site of lumbar puncture at l3 l4 don't do it don't do it if the person is having increased intracranial pressure due to cerebral tumor don't do it in unconnected coagulopathy person will bleed too much bleeding will increase so don't do it in acute spinal cord trauma don't do it so you should know the indications and contraindications what is the position of the patient two positions sitting position and lying down position you can see in sitting position the person will bend forward so that l3 l4 vertebra is coming and in lying down position also the knees are taken into the abdomen and back is taken out so that is lying down so two positions lying down and sitting both these positions are there give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs up procedure first back has to be washed thoroughly with antiseptic soap iodine sterile sheet ye pura wash karo this area pura wash karo acche se soap se iodine se uske baad give a local anesthesia give a local anesthesia here after giving the local anesthesia a thin hollow needle is inserted at l3 l4 the name of the needle is lp needle can you see these all are lp needle lp needle these all are lp needles so we introduce a lp needle and then first we measure the pressure we measure the pressure there and then we take the csf out in a test tube so first we introduce the needle here after introducing the needle we measure the pressure we measure the pressure and then we take out the csf so this is the complete procedure give me a thumbs up and results it is it is sent to the lab so the csf collected in the test tube is sent to the laboratory and in laboratory this reporting of the csf is done on these parameters so pressure already measured by the person who is taking out so you measure the pressure how much mm of water it is so general appearance what is the color how many wbcs are there and which wbcs neutrophil or lymphocyte protein how much milligram sugar how much milligram glucose chloride how much milligram if any microorganism bacteria or virus or fungus if it is visible so these are the parameters in which you have to do the reporting of the csf give me a thumbs up if you got it so meningitis are of three type give me a thumbs up meningitis are of three type as i have told you what are the three types of meningitis just a second let me see if i can see your chat yes i can see so meningitis is basically of three types one is bacterial okay one is bacterial one is viral the third is fungal fungal so bacterial meningitis bacterial meningitis is always acute and it is pus forming bacteria form the pus that's why it is known as acute pyogenic that's why it is known as acute pyogenic give me a thumbs up viral is also acute it is acute but it do not form the pus it do not form the pus that's why known as aseptic aseptic matlab non pus forming right and it is lymphocytic yahan pe lymphocytes zyada badhenge so acute pyogenic bacterial meningitis acute lymphocytic viral meningitis the third one is chronic chronic ke do causes hain ek bacterial ek fungal all bacteria yahan pe jayenge except tb tb is also a bacteria mycobacterium tuberculosis but tb do not cause acute meningitis tb causes chronic so tuberculosis bacteria or one fungus only one fungus causes meningitis in the world the name of the fungus fungus is cryptococcus so tuberculosis or fungal that is cryptococcal ye dono chronic hain so in short we have three type of meningitis bacterial all bacteria here except tb except tb the second is viral bacterial meningitis viral meningitis or all bacteria are there except one bacteria that is tb or tb is a cryptococcus fungus le lo cryptococcus that is fungal so bacterial viral fungal and tb you can say these are the three type of meningitis first learn the name give me a thumbs up so bacterial is acute viral is also acute viral is also acute but tb and crypto is chronic tb and crypto is chronic bacterial is acute and pyogenic because pus is formed viral is not pyogenic it is acute but not pyogenic it is aseptic aseptic and lymphocytic aseptic and lymphocytic and it is chronic so these are the names of the three meningitis give me a thumbs up now in all of them you have collected the csf in a test tube so the test tube will go in the laboratory and lab result will do the examination of the csf and give the report which meningitis it is so let me start one by one the first one is the acute pyogenic meningitis the bacterial one it is acute it is acute so here what is the causative bacteria which causes it so the age group is different for different uh, the different bacteria causes meningitis in different age group in neonates it is caused by streptococcus streptococcus 2 months to 3 years it is caused by pneumococcus 3 years to 20 years it is caused by meningococcus and after 20 years against pneumococcus so streptococcus pneumococcus meningococcus again pneumococcus so learn like this streptococcus up to 2 month 2 month se 3 years tak pneumococcus 3 month se 20 years tak 3 3 years se 20 years meningococcus or after 20 years after pneumococcus so spmp so if you can learn like this so that is the various age group mein alag alag 
इटियोपैथोलॉजी है ओके सो ओके ओके वॉट आर द क्लिनिकल फीचर्स इट इज अ मेडिकल इमरजेंसी यूजली बच्चों में होता है इट इज अ मेडिकल इमरजेंसी द पेशेंट विल हैव फीवर हाई ग्रेड फीवर क्योंकि बैक्टीरिया है ना तो बैक्टीरिया से फीवर आएगा हाई ग्रेड फीवर राइट सीवियर हेडेक सीवियर हेडेक होगा पेशेंट को वॉमिटिंग होगा ड्रॉजीनेस होगा इन सीवियर केसेस द पर्सन कैन गो इन कोमा एंड ओकेशनली कन्वर्शन एंड डेथ कैन अगर राइट एंड स्टिफनेस ऑफ द नेक्स स्टिफनेस ऑन द ऑफ द नेक्स स्पेशली ऑन फॉरवर्ड बैक फॉरवर्ड बैंडिंग so these are the clinical features give me a thumbs up so patient have neck stiffness can you see this is the neck stiffness patient have high grade fever patient have severe headache so these are the symptoms so for confirming in your clinic you have to do an investigation a sign um, that is known as brudnitsky sign what is brudnitsky sign so this is the person in front of you when you bend the knees when you flex the knees see ye knees ko flex karo when you flex the knees uh, involuntary move involuntary uh, uh, okay just a second a positive bend the yeah sorry when you flex the neck involuntary flexion of the knees when you are flexing the neck involuntary flexion of the knees involuntary so when you flex the neck it causes involuntary flexion of the knees and the hip joint knees be flex ho gaye hip joint be flex ho gaya can you see knees and hip both are flexing involuntary when you are flexing the neck this is positive brudnitsky sign give me a thumbs up so that is positive diagnosis ke liye csf there is no blood test take the csf out now see this is the summary the three type of csf are in front of you and this is normal the first one is the normal the three type of csf so see the color see the color normal csf is clear like water acute bacterial meningitis ka csf is cloudy cloudy it is pus it is pus so it is not clear like water it is cloudy the rest two are also clear like water clear like water or slightly turbid but not cloudy clear or turbid so normal is clear and colorless bacteria bacterial wala bacterial wala is purulent purulent that is pus so test tube may contain pus it will look white thick milky milky pus jaisa viral is like water only or chronic is also that is tb or uh, cryptococcus it is also viral it is also clear only so that is the color the first thing you have to see test tube ka color kya hai what is the color of the test tube containing csf number 1 number 2 measure the pressure before taking out measure the pressure so there is a patient in front of you this is the patient you are doing the lumbar puncture of this patient right so this is l3 l4 vertebra so you are inserting the needle here so before taking the csf out in test tube the you 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 put an instrument here for measuring the pressure and measure the pressure measure the pressure after that you take the csf out so how much pressure normal kitna hota hai normal 60 to 150 mm of water it is not mm of mercury it is mm of mm of water 50, 60 to 150 in bacterial it is 180 in viral it is 250 and in chronic it is 300 so that is the pressure so isse bhi aapko rough rough idea hoga ki kaun sa wala meningitis hai see the color of the test tube measure the pressure pehle measure the pressure then take that csf out and see the color uske baad send it to the laboratory ab laboratory decide karega ki kya hai so lab will see four things what four things which cells are present how much protein how much glucose and bacteria present or absent four things will be seen in the laboratory so in the laboratory just suppose i am the pathologist there and this is a sample in front of me it contains csf so i will make a slide of it i will take one drop of the cl i will centrifuge it take one drop here and i will make a slide a smear and i will examine it under microscope and see how many cells are present in it so normal csf have 0 to 4 lymphocytes no neutrophil if you check my csf your csf any normal human being csf you will find 0 to 4 wbcs which wbc lymphocyte never neutrophil even a single neutrophil is abnormal right but if it is acute bacterial you will find only neutrophils 10 to 10000 10 to 10000 neutrophil normal lymphocyte hote hain wo bhi 0 to 4 learn the number also but in bacterial it is neutrophil you will find only neutrophil the slide full of neutrophil 10 to 10000 वायरल में यू विल अगेन फाइंड लिम्फोसाइड एंड ट्यूबरकुलर और फंगल में आल्सो यू विल फाइंड लिम्फोसाइड तो यू विल से मैम नॉर्मल भी तो लिम्फोसाइट ही है बट नॉर्मल लिम्फोसाइड नंबर इज जीरो टू फोर हियर टेन टू हंड्रेड एंड हंड्रेड टू थाउजेंड सो सी द नंबर इज इंपॉर्टेंट यू हैव टू काउंट ऑल्सो सो टेन टू हंड्रेड है कि हंड्रेड टू थाउजेंड है कि जीरो टू फोर है ऑल ऑफ दम आर लिम्पो 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 आई एग्री ऑल ऑफ दम आर लिम्पो लिम्पो नॉर्मल भी लिम्पो है ये तो न्यूट्रोफिल है बाकी सब लिम्पो है but you have to see the number give me a thumbs up next you have to see the protein you have to see the protein normal protein kitna hota hai it is 15 to 45 mg 15 to 50 kar do 15 to 50 mg aur sugar hota hai 50 to 80 so learn like 15 to 50 50 to 80 protein sugar so you can learn like this bacteria bacteria have a cell wall 
Yes, all bacteria have cell wall. So, because of the cell wall, cell wall is made up of protein. So, just suppose this is my test tube. It contains bacteria inside it. I don't know whether it contains. So, if it contains bacteria, bacteria have cell wall also and cell wall is made up of protein. So, if I measure the protein content of this test tube, the protein will be more, more as compared to normal, which contains only CSF. Another test tube contains only CSF, no bacteria. So, I am measuring the protein content of both. So, here only CSF, here CSF with bacteria cell wall. So, protein content will be more. Have you got it? So, here it is markedly raised. And glucose is reduced because bacteria will eat glucose. Bacteria will consume the glucose, so glucose is less. So, that is the thing. But here, virus have less protein. Capsid hota hai protein ka, so it is raised but mildly. Yahan pe bhi raised. So, protein to hamesha raised hoga. Every time it is raised. Glucose sirf bacterial mein kam hoga. Baki dono mein almost normal rahega. Kyunki only bacteria consume glucose, viruses do not consume glucose. Give me a thumbs up. And if you do the bacteriology, you will find here the positive organism on the culture plate. You will not find bacteria here. Here you will find TB. You will find TB. So, that is the thing. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. So, this is the slide showing bacterial one. Can you see this is the bacterial one? All of them are neutrophils. All of them are neutrophils. 10 to 10,000 neutrophils are there. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. And this is the viral. You, this is the viral. Just a second. Let me show you the slide. All of them are lymphocytes. 10 to 100 lymphocytes are there. Give me a thumbs up. And uh, okay, these are some important viruses you can read by yourself. Chronic. Chronic me do cheese hai. A bacteria hai, TB, or a fungus hai, cryptococcus. So, okay. Ka slide hai mere paas. I don't have, but yeah, TB ke liye you can do a special stain, ZN stain, or cryptococcus ke liye you do India ink preparation. So, you, this is the ZN stain showing tubercular bacteria, the red rods you can see, and this is this is you know India ink preparation showing the capsulated fungus that is cryptococcus. So, I am done with it. Thank you very much. I hope you have learned the topic well. I am done with the meningitis. So, don't forget to write your feedback in the comment box. If you need any other topic, you have any suggestion, you have any request that I should take any topic from the pathology uh, for you, entire pathology, please write down the name of the topic. So, I will plan that on YouTube free class and take that topic. So, thank you very much. So, next class will be tomorrow daily 9 to 10 a.m. in the morning. We have classes of pathology on YouTube in which I take very important topics daily one topic, right? So, if you want detailed lectures along with the free recordings and the notes, what you can do, it is available for all. It is free. So, it is available on an academy learners app. So, for the newcomers who don't know, who don't know, okay, um, Hamas is asking how to know the fungal. So, Hamas, this is the only table now. So, if it is fungal, TB is also fungal. Bhi hai, fungal bhi hai. So, fungal, maybe all these findings will be there. But here, you will not find ZN stain pe TB bacteria. Here, you have to do India ink preparation in which the fungus will be clear. So, here you will find all these findings. The pressure will be 300, lymphocytes will be 100 to 1000, protein will be slightly raised, glucose will be slightly reduced, but you uh, but you will not find TB bacteria. You will find India ink preparation pe fungus. That is the only fungus which causes meningitis in world that is cryptococcus. Have you got it? Uh, have you got it? Those who are asking the doubt, have you got it? So, for the newcomers, let me tell you ki where you find the detailed lectures with the free recording. So, go to the Play Store. From the Play Store, please install an Academy Learners app, an Academy Learning app. And after installing the app, go to the Need PG category. Select goal as Need PG category. After going in Need PG category, search my name. My name is Dr. Priyanka Sachdev. You will find my name along with my profile link. Please follow my profile link. You will get a list of free recordings taken by me. If you like my way of teaching, if you like my way of teaching, you will find all the recordings available for free there. The only thing you will require a code to unlock it. It is free, but you will require a code. The code is Sachdev10. My surname only, Sachdev, S-A-C-H-D-E-V, Sachdev10 is the code. So, please take the advantage of these classes. Thank you very much. On Unacademy, we have a paid subscription also for the newcomers. We have two types of paid subscription, Plus and Iconic. In Plus, you will get access to live and recorded lectures of Unacademy only from India's top educator along with live tests, live quiz and the um uh, you can also access to the question bank in iconic along with all the features of plus you will get also access to prep letter. so if you are thinking of taking a paid subscription go with iconic that is my advice to you because the price difference is less but here you, here you are getting an ad additional advantage of prep letter. so these are the features you will get access to when you will take the subscription these are the batches you will get access to all these batches from the top educators of the india once you take the subscription these are the current offers available with us so, please take the advantage of these offers. It is for limited period only. What you can do, go to an academy learning app, check for various plans. 
for the plus also for the iconic also so what plan is comfortable to you check the prices of various plan so longer the plan cheaper it is so if you are a first prof second prof student go with a longer plan two year three year four year and if you are a final year in turn go with a shorter plan three months six months so it's your wish whatever plan you are taking according to your need according to your wish take your plan the good news is that if you apply my code before payment on any of these plan you will get discount straight forward 10 percent discount so the code is same suchdev10 s-a-c-h-d-e-v suchdev10 is the code so please thank you very much see you all in the next class tomorrow morning uh, 9 a.m again with the next topic thank you very much on youtube